Hi, welcome to Mathematics with Tom. I am Tom and today we are going to take a look. What we're going to do is we're going to prove that the null space of A, the null space of A is actually a vector space. So here we go. The null space, so the null space of A, null space, null space of A is a vector space. Okay, and we also remember this, I'm going to put um, comma denoted as n of a. So that's the notation for the null space of a. So remember this, we said that the null space of a The null space, I think that should have been one word. The null space of A is, and we'll use the word set, is the set of all X that satisfy A X equals zero. Now, to show this as a space, we have to show three things. So one is, is we have to show that x, uh, that zero, we have to show that zero, the zero vector, not the scalar, that zero is in, oops, is in the space. So my space is the null space of A. And you can see that it has to be because if you take A, and you multiply it by zero, the result is zero. So we, we do know that zero satisfies our solution, so we can say zero is in the null space of A. Okay, that's pretty mathy, but that was all there is. Just those, first one we're going to show it, second one we showed it worked, third one we just said that it worked, two. So this one, this is a little different now. Um, let, we need to choose, we have to show that the addition of vectors is in the space. So let x, y be vectors in the null space of A. Okay. Well, what does that mean? That means a couple of things. It means, I'm gonna come over here, use this little bit. That means that A times x equals zero. And so let me even write that intuition as we go. This, this means that a times x is equal to zero. That's what it means. If x is in the null space, it satisfies that equation. And it also means that y, uh, and oops, and that a times times y is equal to zero. Well, let's see, let's do this. Let's add these two equations. So if I add the left, I have an a times x plus an a times y. And on the right-hand side, I'd have a zero plus zero. Remember, that's the zero vector, if it helps. So then, let's see, on the right-hand side, well, let's work on the left. Notice that I have the a is on the left. So I can write this as a parenthesis x plus y. And zero plus zero, that's still the zero vector. But wait, what did I just show? I just showed that a times this x plus y, whatever it is, you could call it z maybe, a times z equals zero for z equal x plus y. So, so, x plus y is in the null space. And you didn't have to use the z, maybe, but my point was to show you that when you took x and y and you added them together, what did you get? You got another vector, and that vector had to be in the null space as well. Okay, so we're doing pretty, pretty well. There's one last thing, one last step to show, and that is the third step. So number three says let let C be in the real numbers. In other words, C is just a scalar. 
what do I have to do? I have to show that CX is in the null space of A. In other words, somehow multiplying by a scalar, you, you can't like shoot out of the space. That's really what's happening. Or maybe you can't get so small, but if you got too small, you'd be at zero, but we already showed that zero is there. Well, what about just C times X? So let's try. Well, um, this means, so this means that A times this vector CX, well, we don't know that that's zero, but what we do know is that we can factor out that scalar. It doesn't, the, the multiplication of the scalar, where, whether we multiply it at the beginning or after the multiplication by the matrix, it's the same. So I can say that that's the same as C times A X. Oh, but wait a minute. We already know where X is. X is in the null space. So then that means this is C times A X, but A X is zero. The zero vector, which is C times the zero vector is still the zero vector. And so we, what we've shown then is thus, C X is in the null space of A, and since all three requirements were met, the null space of A, the null space of A is a vector space. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching.